you first realise it when you're playing in the reserve team. You realise how bad some of the fans are against you and how the men in the middle are. Oh, a few wee decisions here and a wee decision there and a wee warning to this player, a wee booking, you know, before the yellow cards and that, just a wee word in their ears, you're getting booked the next time you do that, down you go. And that puts you off tackling. We had some good hard tacklers in our day. Both sides, every team had it in Scotland. And uh, England had them as well. And a wee word in your ear, and that oh, upsets you. And that, especially your engine room, I like to Bobby Murder, wee Bertie and that. They're getting booked early. In the latter stages, David Hay coming in, getting booked early in the games. You know, it upsets the, the man's afraid to do something. So that's you getting took out the equation. So they're influencing the game there. A wee decision. When it's great offsides, the flag stays down. And it's played. Uh, we had Bobby Lennox, I don't know how many times he'd scored goals and it was never offside. It was proved it was never off uh, never offside. But these decisions go against you all the time. And it's hard. It's big jock says you've just got to play. Our instructions were it's not 11 you're playing, boys, it's 12, 13, 14. It's all too common. I mean, I was brought up with that. I'm 67. I mean, I'm not a young boy. I was brought up with that. There's no, it's not, it's nothing. <laughs> I, I would always amaze at Celtic supporters about eight years ago when they were going through a terrible terrain against uh, referees as though this was some sort of shocking new. You think that it happened? I mean, I brought up with that. My dad told me about it when he was a boy. I mean, this is just common knowledge. Again, it, it, if it's denied, it's denied. But it's, the fact of the matter is, it's just a fact. Um, I could, since I, ever I was going to the football, uh, I can remember uh, decisions ever since I was a wee boy. And that was getting passed down from my, my father and my grandfather, and they would say the same things. Oh, it's been going on for, for years. Um, I, I, I always think what we could have achieved. The times that we could have had other, cha other chances at Champions League when, when we've been when cheated out of the, the place. Through the years, I remember getting told about a man, Peter Craigmile. Oh, he's supposed to be a group, one of the best referees in Scot uh, British football. And they had a shop in Aberdeen, just up <laughs> around the corner. And he shut his shop every time Celtic were up in Aberdeen. Because he knew <laughs> he would have got pelters. And he was one of the first that I can remember my father and my uncles talking about, Peter Craig Mile, a bandit. Well, that's polite for him, you know. But it, that's how far you can go back. Shocking. Uh, if you read the Celtic history, a uh, world, Second World War, with the book. Three players ordered off against Rangers. Nobody knows why. And it was actually a reserve team we were playing. We had to play, you know, it goes way back, it goes way back deep, very deep. There's collusion, absolute collusion, absolutely. There's, there's never a consistently unfair decision that consistently goes to our side. You know, that would be the norm if it was just a mistake then we would get a bundle of mistakes to our side. And that never happens. It's maybe one mistake to us, eight to them. One to us, eight to them. One to, and when I say them, I mean everybody. I don't, not particularly picking on Rangers or anything like that. It's just everybody. It's quite a damning phrase, honest mistake. Well, I think it was a way to get around uh, either two things. Uh, uh, an aptitude uh, or an ability to be a good referee. Or, or at worst, uh, you know, no conspiracy, but certainly at worst it could be uh, deemed to be, um, uh, I used to say, favouring a, a, a team or teams. Um, and, uh, you know, to cover it all, we say, well, it's all mistakes. I uh, say, so you, you can go through any walk of profession, whether it be judges, lawyers, or, or whatever. There's always somebody that's been corrupt down here, but there's apparently it's never happened within Scottish football at uh, refereeing fraternity. It was a half centenary year, and Tottenham came up to play the centenary game. And I knew Pat Jennings, Joe Kinnear and a couple of the Tottenham boys. And it was Celtic, ex-Celtic players, Rangers, Hibs and Hearts. So the way the draw was made for a five-a-side tournament before the game and at half time. So before the game, it was Celtic versus Rangers. We beat Rangers. Hibs beat the Hearts. 
So you can imagine, at half time, Celtic versus Hibs, we won. We never got a trophy. We pursued this cup, never got it. And they gave us a pen. And we were told to get into the, uh, into the school, get changed in there, and that's it. And when we were walking off, some of the Tottenham boys were going, what are we going on here for? Because of the abuse against the Irish and all that. And I, I said to him, I said, well, what do you expect? <laughs> you spot me, you're in now. I don't think before the season starts, they say, now, we're going to give out eight red cards to Celtic, four penalties against them, we're going to deny them three stone wall penalties. I don't think anybody says that. But there is just an inbuilt, an inbuilt thing in Scottish psyche that allows Rangers to be perceived as an establishment somehow. I don't know how much of an establishment it is to pay their taxes, but there you go, that's another argument altogether, you know. It's just their upbringings. That's what it is, you know. It's a West of Scotland thing. Well, they say it's a West of Scotland thing, but when you were a young boy playing football for Celtic, and you went to the East Coast, it's not a West of, Co a West of Scotland thing. It's just in them. It's just this hate against us. And it's just the our beginnings. That's all it is, you know. It's just that, it's inbred in them. I think, um, honestly, <laughs> for me, the rest of Scottish people, supporters, football fans, I've got to wake up and realise that this, this old firm tag that we're constantly uh, going on our coattails is, they've got to realise that we are a club alone. We are nothing to do with that other team. And until the other fans of other clubs coming up we are thinking because they they believe that both teams Celtic and the other team for the south side they believe that because they got the decisions we we get them as well which is absolute garbage their love for a certain club they they deny it they deny it why don't we do what England do when you become a referee I believe you're been told, who do you support? And you've got to put it down and you don't get the, the games. That's what I was led to. But if they'd done it up here, it'd be treble. There'd be some lies getting told. You know, Albion Rovers and Queen's Park would have a lot of uh, referees supporting them then. See, if you just have it, where there's, there's, there's neutral referees, um, which, which happens everywhere. Um, and Millie Scotland is not the, the, the biggest of countries, but uh, I think you've still got to declare. Uh, and if you can make sure that, uh, you know, as an impartial or in, well, uh, uh, somebody who's you wouldn't think uh, would leave that avenue open uh, to be accused of, uh, of that, then I'm sure uh, it would certainly help the game. It would help the game enormously. Uh, they have a different system down there. Uh, where you can't be uh, a referee if you're uh, from uh, a hometown or if you support a football club. Uh, now I think that's the problem with Scotland um, and Scottish football, uh, is that it will be very difficult to get a number of referees who do not support one side of, of uh, the Glasgow derby, whether it be Celtic, whether it be Rangers. Um, and, uh, and I think that's where um, people's minds are then criticism any decisions of whether it's uh, you know favoritism or whether it's done um, off the cuff or whether it's done uh, as as a result of maybe um, you know favouring one team. So um, you know I think that's that's the difference between you know um, certainly down in England uh, and also international football, European football. Uh, there is uh, I think a clause where you, you cannot referee. Uh, a game where it's where you have a, a vested interest, uh, and I think that certainly would certainly help uh, to uh, eliminate some of what we would consider to be you know questionable decisions uh, in, in, in this country uh, if that were to happen. Um, whether we do have enough referees or not enough referees of the quality, but uh, we, we don't seem to be getting a good batch just now. So maybe um, you know the next great ones coming through would certainly help. I thought it was bad away when I played, but see, in the last couple of years, it's got absolutely worse. It's absolutely a shambles. Disgraceful behaviour, some of them. You know, and they're doing it blatant. They don't give a, you know, the Lanarkshire Mafia is one of the worst. They are absolutely one of the worst. 
they've no qualifications or nothing about. Well, there's certainly plenty of examples. I think the season under Tony Mowbray, um, where uh, Tony was here, and, and this wasn't just coming from Celtic-minded uh, people. Uh, this was coming from impartial uh, uh, opposition managers, um, players, uh, and they were also of the opinion that Celtic were, were getting very hard done by uh, in decisions. Um, and you think, and, and it was a consistently. Uh, consistent throughout the whole of the season, uh, where blatant penalties weren't given, uh, and, and we've seen that sort of um, unfold uh, again um, uh, in, in many occasions, where uh, you know the, the, the game, you know decisions that are game-changing, uh, are just swept away as being an honest mistake, um, which I, you would like to, you know, let me try and explain fully, uh, so we can understand and get to the root of why, why it is. Is it just uh, the ineptitude of the referees or is it something more sinister? You, you, you want to get to that, so you talk maybe the referees would be able to come out and explain themselves. If we do get a penalty, as uh, the Doogie Gate, for example, uh, oh, I don't know, I've made a mistake, don't give them a penalty, all that stuff, you know, cloak and dagger. And then the linesman was hanging out to dry because he was like, oh, I never said this. And they all try to cover up. And then the whole spin over it all was Celtic were complaining about it. Now, fuck, we, we never caused the situation other than we were denied a penalty. And the referee lied to us. But it's been turning around that, yeah, Celtic, and Celtic had to get, it was because of Celtic, we had to get referees in from abroad and there was a strike on. See when the referees come in from abroad, everybody's like, ah, Football's actually all right, the referees look okay. You know, there's no agenda there. They're not told to do it. They just do it because that's what they're... What's been in, almost indoctrinated into them, that's what they know. And they're, they're not sitting down having a big meeting and going, actually, guys, you know, we're going to book him and he's not going to do this and he's not... It's, it's, an, it's like an inherent bias, which they've grown up with, and this is what they know. You know, if this is what you know, this is what you know. And the influence of, of uh, Masons and Orange Order, that pervades through everything they do. You know, and with that part of it, they, they get to a point where they don't think they're doing anything wrong. That's just what they do. Uh, you know, it's, it's learnt behaviour. And it's, it's learnt behaviour all the way right through. And it's gone on for years and years and years and years. And if you want to get to the top, you better learn that behaviour. You better, you know. But they're not sitting down going, "This is what you have to do." There's no handbook saying, you know, the way to get ahead. But the way to get ahead, it's, it's a nod and a wink. This, you know, what you have to do there. And that's that's very difficult to stop. You never see a referee joking with a Celtic player in the park. I, I noticed it last week. Joking, you know, their managers know you can get away with it. Get in Celtic's face, you'll get away with it. <coughs> Just get in their face, rumble them up, you'll get away with it. I think, certainly when you go back now, when you look at referees, I think they certainly are under more pressure, more scrutiny. You've now, as I mentioned, so many different cameras to watch the angles. Of, and I, I, would, I would hope uh, that in the future that the referees would be able to use that technology. Uh, they're so against it, I don't understand why, because it would help the game. It would help get them correct decision. Um, so, so looking back on the times, you know, when when a young player, I think referees, you know, you certainly could could talk to referees a wee bit more. Uh, they were a wee bit more open uh, in years gone by. That is certainly not the case now. Um, they're there. It's just a letter of the law, stick to it, and uh, there's no coming and going a wee bit away. Games changed as well. You know, it's um, in terms of the amount of decisions referees have to pick on, pick up on, uh, and they're far more stricter in terms of bookings and stuff like that, you know, so it's, it's a harder game for them. Uh, but you certainly hope that, you know, with the, the benefit of the, the cameras that we have nowadays, you know, we would certainly hope they'd all use them to get to the betterment of, uh, of the game uh, and to get the correct decisions, uh, you know, because that's what we want. Um, you know, if a referee's not seen it, which has, has been used in many examples, has been cited in many examples, that he was uncited, well, you've got plenty of cameras within the stadium now. Um, just about every football game, uh, to be able to help you, to assist you. you. That's when you learn, when you go away from the big game, and you go to play the sort of wee teams, and you just stand there scratching your head and say, what was that for? You'd always say, what was that for? 
and you never questioned it because you knew you got a stupid answer. It's me, no you. I decide, no you. My rules, no yours. That's what it's all about. My rules, no yours. No rules that times don't come into it. Uh, that's why for years and years we always said, why don't we bring an English referee up? Could you imagine Bernard, uh, Bernard, uh, Bernard Gallagher coming up? He wouldn't go it. They'd have complained right away, his name. And, and like I've uh, said earlier, I think we're still waiting for explanations on, on a lot of decisions. Um, you know, it seems to get washed under the cameras. All they, these things happen in football, yet when one manager complains about it, then all the, the press jump on the bandwagon to go and, and, and vilify a manager or, 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 or sorry, or, or, or linesman or a thing, which uh, doesn't happen uh, when certainly we complain about things. It's, it's Celtic paranoia. Paranoia? You paranoid? Of course I'm paranoid. Everybody's paranoid when it comes to referees, but we're more paranoid because we've got more facts and figures that back us up. Tell us about the incident with Kenny Clark. Yes, uh, Kenny. I, I believe that was um, at the time. I was probably the precursor to before the magic spray came in uh, to mark out the lines. It was an instance in a game. Uh, it was a, a Celtic Rangers game, a Derby game that. Um, I just felt the wall, it was a free kick at the edge of the box, I think Anne Thompson was on it, um, very close to the edge of the box and I just felt the wall wasn't uh, at the appropriate distance, which was 10 yards. I did go out to measure it up, which I, I think he took exception to uh, when I was doing Basil Faulty steps when <laughs> at the time, um, but no, it, it was, uh, he didn't change it uh, and he booked me for for descent by action, I think it was that uh, obviously your question has his his length of what you think's ten yards is. Um, it, it certainly wasn't the case, and uh, I just say I thought so at the time that I felt I had to go and, and try and measure out uh, in my own way, and it, it certainly wasn't ten yards. You talk about Tiny Wharton. I remember one game here, David Hay. I think it was his first game against Rangers, and I vividly remember it. It was a 50-50 ball. Just another half side, uh, side half lay line. And John Gregg, the hard man of that team, was going for the ball, and David he was coming in, this slim built Celtic player. And two of them went for it, and it was a collision. And Gregg lying in the ground, squealing, shouting and bawling, and Tommy Wart Tom Wharton just nodded his head all the time. Just like that, nodded his head, that's right, uh huh, uh huh. And he got up, got the ball for a foul. Morton says, no, I want your name. And it's a foul to Celtic. You went over the top and the boy just crunched you. And that's when David Hay had respect for... Eh, that's when John Gregg had respect for David Hay. He knew he was against him, a hard, hard player. I was certainly to recall a game where um, it was a, a very questionable uh, decision by the referee to start the game when... I think it was in about 1994-ish or something like that that uh, John Collins had scored a game. I think Rangers were on an unbeaten run of about 30-40 games uh, when they came to Celtic Park. Uh, and, and we scored the first goal and s celebrating as you do, uh, which you know, at that time we weren't very successful. I uh, hadn't had a great record against Rangers, so we scored the opening goal. And as we're celebrating, uh, we're running up the side of the, the pitch and the eight years just got onto our half of the pitch, um, the referee started the game, which I've never seen an instance of that before or, or, or since, uh, but also when the instance of that, which has been caught on camera, um, that both uh, two of our Celtic players were, were certainly inside the, cent the centre circle, uh, but he still started the game. Uh, and fortunately for us, uh, Big Packy made a save, I think, and it went for a corner. I, was, um, I, I just... I just don't understand how that game started when uh, normally you allow players to get back into a resemblance of a formation, but more, more so was there was two Celtic players within the centre circle when they started the game, which I, didn't mean, I don't think any opposition was supposed to be in the centre circle when they started the game, so uh, that was certainly a questionable one where I um, don't think we get an answer for it, and as I said earlier about because we eventually won the game, you think, well, you won the game, then you know what you're winning about. 
Scottish referees and have an international reputation for whatever reason, I'm not entirely sure. They get promoted above their, what's the phrase used? Above their pay grade. They're much, they're, their competence is always questionable. N even, it's not even impartiality, they're just not very good. It's, the people see clear fouls and they go, no, nothing happened there. Nothing happens, well, that's a booking. Everyone's, you're questioning the referee. You're, you should never see your referee in a game of football. The best ones are never there. I think that was Webster at Ibrox. And they uh, were all over them. And we're playing well. And it looked, got to the stage, it looked at nothing each on the cards. And it was a heavy, heavy day. And Molly Johnson, eh, uh, Molly Henderson got the ball and it just sprinted in. He always would go down and then he'd come, cut inside to have a shot and hit the ball. And I was standing watching it coming. I says, well, it's going wide. And Big Billy standing like that and went like that. And the ball happened here. And the, sign, the mark was on his jersey. He pointed a penalty kick. We all looked. He says, look, there is jersey. Penalty kick. And I remember Big Jock saying, this last time you'll get a fucking tip off of me for the, horse, the horses or the greyhounds, you. <laughs> These wee clubs, they were getting decisions that unbelievable. You know, with a wee winger, wee Jimmy, he got kicked up and down the park every week. And it was open warfare. Oh. And we made it worse. We used to get a free kick and give it to Jimmy because we knew he'd get kicked again. Just give it to the wee man, get another kick. So he would go up the field. But it was terrible that he's through Bobby Lennox. Uh, he ran by John Gregg, the Glasgow Cup tie. And there was only two men in that half, and Gregg just took him right out. I think Bobby broke his ankle or... No. No, no, no. no decision. We, we had to learn to get over this wall. It's a sort of wall you have to fight against, you know. The big joke you've already stated, the big joke said it. You're playing 13, 14 men. The more goals you score, the better. And it was very difficult. Bobby Lennox, as I said, I'd love to know how many goals he disallowed. Absolutely crazy. The SFA never picked up on it. They, they never changed it. They know it's there. They didn't care. I think the SFA are complicit and allowed this culture to to pervade within the referee association, when they were, they are appointing the referees. They they are supposedly in control of them, and when somebody constantly makes the same decision wrongly, you know, in a normal normal job, you would be reprimanded, you would be talked to, and you would fix that behaviour. Never done. It was never done. It was a constant. It was. A, you knew it was coming. You knew bad decisions were coming. You knew you would have to fight. You'd have to be much better than Rangers and other teams. Especially when you, when you got to final and Rangers weren't involved. You knew you were in for a hard game because you were playing against 12. Which had, you just went, right, we've got to do this. Sometimes you can't win against that. You know, and it's the small decisions, the constant small decisions. I would say the, within the, with, with Masons and the Orange Law, especially within the, the west of Scotland, it's very important to the people who are within those organisations. The referees are, as we see them as part of, of the same thing. You know, an part of the Orange Order and a Mason, and you're a referee, well, that's a given. That's, all you, you, that's what you are. Even though half of them might not be. You know, the, the influence these organisations have are pervasive within Scotland. They're, they're part of every fabric. Every fabric of Scottish society has their influence within it, to a lesser and greater degree. Within the SFA, yes, yeah, it's, it's clear it's there. It, there's clear there's an influence, and the influence that comes from that is it is anyone but Celtic. It is. You know, we don't want them to succeed because they're everything we're not. They're they're anti-British as 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 they see it. May not be, but maybe. But they're 
perception is that? I've came across referees actually uh, playing amateur football, the one in particular actually uh, refereed five Celtic games in the uh, back in the 80s. He was, a, he was from Stonehouse, which like Kirloot is an ardent uh, stronghold for the other club. Um, his name was uh, Wally McNeish, who Wally, who I got to know when we played in the amateurs on a Sunday, and I played as a boy with him, when I played with the boys club in Killock, he, he would referee the matches with a Rangers hat on. I, I says to him one day, I says, Wally, what? why the Rangers hat? He says to me, well, if I had a Celtic hat on, son, I would have scabs in my head. I know two boys who were told, you'll never make it, son. One of them was told that uh, your season, you had a season book at Celtic Park. Well, if that's the case, why doesn't he go and ask the other men at uh, refereeing from the Lanarkshire, who's all got season books at Ibrox? When you tell English people like this, it can't be true. You say, that's true. You've got to come up and experience it yourself, you know, how, what's in it. It's a joke. As, as Jock Steen used to say with Celtic, you go out, you need to beat 12 men. There's always a, a referee there. And sometimes Celtic could blow away anybody, another team, the officials, everything, it didn't matter. It's that, that's where it all stems, as I said to you, we had to fight. We had to show a lot of true grit, you know. You're fighting adversity. I know they all say you're talking a lot, but you had to have that, you had to have that bitter steel about you. And Big Jot instilled it into you. You know, before that, it was, I said, oh, I need to take it. But when Big Jock came back, Big Jock instilled that as when we were a young team, before he went to Dunfermline, we won the treble. When Big Jock was a coach here, before he went to Dunfermline, practically the same squad, with a few exceptions. Right, boys, go out there. Don't listen to them. You've got to win it for you. And remember the fans, win it for them. Just go out there against all adversity, win the game. And it was very hard to do it. But we'd done it for nine years. And it was great when, you know, you had the players that Jock had at his disposal, um, which were world class football players. Um, and uh, you know, to, to eliminate a referee then you have to be at the top of your game. There are games that, that, that can get changed that you know, more often than not, games are a lot closer and a lot tighter. Uh, and, and instances of, of minor decisions within a game. Um, you know, can cost. Uh, uh, you know, when a game is so tight, it can cost you within a game like that. You know, whether it be a sending off, whether it be a penalty, whether it be uh, not giving a goal or something like that. You know, they, they can have major influences in a game that is tight. What's, what's his face? It used to be the the minister. It was a referee. It was a minister. Oh, what's that guy's name? The minister. It was a referee. <coughs> Aye, Mike McCurry. And Mike McCurry was a, a church minister, a referee, absolute blue nose to the core. You know, every service you'd, uh, after a game you'd hear him about him singing basically songs related to kind of football chants and all that. And, and not that I would want a Catholic priest to referee a game, but that is the kind of equivalent of it. You just wouldn't want that to happen, you know. And there was a guy, absolute true blue nose, hated Celtic was refereeing Celtic Rangers matches. He ain't going to be impartial ever, ever, you know? And he was, the following day after Cel uh, Celtic would beat with Rangers, he's in his congregation and he's singing simply the best. You know? And as I said, I, I, I don't think Celtic fans, any Celtic fan would want that, the equivalent the other side to, you know, to kind of have it even, oh, why would you want that? You don't want that in football. You want a referee to go, that's what I've seen, that's what I'm giving. Know these guys that see it through blue tinted specs. I mean, anybody in public life who's part of a secret society or a secret order, that's ridiculous. It's utterly ridiculous. We, we're meant to live in a transparent society and th you're a member of, you know, they call the Masons a, not a, a secret society, but a society with secrets. Bollocks. <laughs> it really is. You have to put your affiliations down, you know. You have, you have to put your references down when you go for a job and have a referee. Why would you leave out that? Why, why, why is it left out? You know, you're 
you're certainly it's a public thing, you're, you're, public organisation you're going into. So you have to be transparent, saying you're, you're part of the meeting. If they're open, honest about it, what they're doing, that's fine. But why hide it? It, it, it's, it has to be mandatory. Oh, uh, the Pope joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doing it in the works, email and sending it out. And <laughs> See, to be honest now, we, we all hear jokes. We all do it within company you're in, and you know what jokes you can say to certain people. Hugh Dallas did that joke within his company, you know, within the workplace environment, you know. So that's the way it is, you know. And I've heard jokes as well coming from people that I know, and you think, oh, it's a bit dodgy, mate, you know, what are you saying that shit for, you know? But there's jokes that I do touch a line, cross borders, and you do get them. It all depends your company you're with. But he done it out with that kind of rule book, so. And it's a kind of typical thing, you know, from a referee. I mean, I've got a, a phone number right just now I can give you from last Saturday. Phoned up, uh, Regimental Blues, I believe it was. Uh, they said it was, whether it was or not, saying uh, we're coming down, your pub's getting wrecked shortly. Uh, that was last Saturday. Uh, I said, I OK, very good, look forward to it. I hung up and then about two hours later, they phoned again and uh, said to them, uh, I OK, we'll be waiting here, the neighbours come in. Uh, and uh, that's fine. But the second time round, at 1471, they'd actually left their phone number. Which I don't think is very bright. I mean, I think if I was going to do that, I wouldn't leave my phone number. <laughs> I know it's funny, but really, come on. I mean, if you're threatening people, you don't leave your mobile phone number. Now, I've got it, and I've got it, I've kept it aside. Uh, I've kept it aside for two reasons, really. One, uh, if something does happen, which, I mean, they are nutters, so they might then I've got a contact I can give to the police. Uh, and if they don't, I uh, might have a little bit of fun with it earlier date. We'll it, say no more. But in the end, it came down to the final day of the season and Hearts had to beat Dundee to win the title. So who was going to referee that crucial match? It wasn't going to be the lifelong Hearts... Oh, fuck, I, 